Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? Sometimes it's a worthwhile exercise to take a giant step back and get some perspective. Whoa, too far. Okay, that's better. The Milky Way is a barred spiral galaxy, and of course, we are inside of it. From a dark sky site, at this time of year, one can see the collective light of the stars of our galaxy shining across hundreds and thousands of light years of space, along with large clouds of gas and dust that form dark rifts through it. Towards the center of it is a bulge that is somewhat wider than the rest of the galaxy's disk. I know, I know, most of us can't see, well, most of that, but it's still there, climbing from Sagittarius in the south, up to Altair, through the Summer Triangle, past Deneb, and down towards Cassiopeia and Perseus in the north. And this band of light, the galactic plane, is bisected by the ecliptic of our own solar system, near the lid of the teapot in Sagittarius, at about a 60 degree angle. So not only does the sun trace its way across this region of our galaxy at times, the moon does too. And this week, it passes near some great things to see, though perhaps best observed when the moon is not there. Orbiting around our galaxy are some of the oldest gravitational objects in the universe, globular clusters. These compact groupings of hundreds of thousands of stars orbit around the center of our galaxy, located at Sagittarius A, a supermassive black hole around which all the stars in our galaxy revolve too. It's located near the spout of the teapot in Sagittarius, where the steam is escaping. But globulars don't revolve along the plane with the other stars in the disk of the galaxy. They often revolve above, below, and through the Milky Way. And many globulars are near or around the bulge of that galactic disk. That is the fatter central portion towards the middle bar region. More on that in a moment. And now this week's Dark Sky Fact. Have you read Paul Bogard's book, The End of Night? Check it out. It's a wonderful way to get acquainted with light pollution issues and reconnecting with the night sky. The moon cuts across that area this week, gliding past some of these globulars above and below the galactic plane along the way. On Monday, the moon is in Scorpius, and the globulars M80 and M4 are near here. In fact, they form a line that goes from the moon to just south of Antares, the red giant star in the Scorpion. An evening later, our natural satellite passes into Ophiuchus, the doctor, and there are quite a few dimmer globular clusters here as we get close to the central part of our home galaxy. But the brightest of these is Messier 9. It's not far off from 2.5 magnitude Sabic, or Eta Ophiuchi. On Wednesday, Luna sits above the lid of the teapot, near where globular clusters M22 and M28 are. The moon is also just about on the galactic plane then, too. M22 is the lovely, large, brilliant object here, but don't overlook its smaller appearing cousin nearby. It's not that M28 is actually smaller, okay, it actually is smaller, but it's also quite a bit farther away. On Thursday, the moon has traveled along the ecliptic and will be below the galactic plane, though mostly we just need to be patient for it to get out of Sagittarius, which it does on Friday. Inside the boundaries of Capricornus, we can now look to where the globular cluster M30 is. As this graphic shows, the cluster is quite a ways below the galactic bulge compared to M4, or the even further out M5, M10, and M12. By the weekend, our bright gibbous phased satellite is nearly full, and it's also in the dim large Aquarius we discussed last week when looking for Neptune. The globular cluster M2 is located here, though appearing somewhat closer to the galactic plane than M30. Take a few moments each evening this week to go outside and watch the moon move through the sky, and then imagine how these far-off islands of stars are orbiting around our own galactic home. Mars and Saturn still sit in the southwest during early evening, and Jupiter continues to climb above the eastern horizon in the early morning. If you like this video, please subscribe on YouTube or to Eyes on the Sky on Facebook and share these videos with others so we can continue educating about light pollution issues and what people can see in the night sky. Thanks for watching. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller wishing you clear and dark skies.